Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Today we step back into the High Torque Arena to cross a big boy off our list, and we picked up the biggest, baddest of the big boys, the Ingersoll Rand W7152, this being their K22 kit, which comes with two batteries for a wallet crunching $455. But the best deal might be for you a K12 kit for $400 with a single battery and charger, since most people don't have IR 20 volt batteries laying around too much. But that's just one reason why this is considered the heavyweight of the high torques. The W7152 advertises 1,000 foot-pounds forward torque and 1,500 foot-pounds nut-busting torque. Now, is that the honest foot-pounds variety from IR, like their old-school 231H? Or let's say their more creative approach, like they seemingly used on their 35 Max, which is rated for 450 and 625. Yeah, our dyno found it more suited to maybe adjusting carburetor screws rather than anything else. The only other cordless we've tested on the channel that rocks numbers like 1,500 is the rigid octane high torque, which pulled no punches on its way to the top of our leaderboards. While that rigid may not have scored as high as it could have on our TTC rank chart, which we'll not be getting rid of, for going up against its 1,100 foot-pounds tightening claim and probably somewhat due to its larger size, Here's a new rank list we'll be showing you at times after we tally those tools on our points system. And this one's ordered purely by power, this time as an average of peak and dynamic torque. Essentially, across a 15 second run, what are the torque values of those 15 seconds? You add them together, divided by 15 for an average torque, which takes into account the heavy blows from dynamic torque down low, which is also great for busting corrosion free, and also peak ultimate torque, which our point system currently favors. You'll see when considering all these values across the run, the rigid nearly takes the top spot and is the top spot among cordless, surpassing the M18 using an HD 12.0 battery, mainly thanks to that low end power. But back to our spendy IR 20 volt. She's got a few tricks up her sleeve. It's rocking this halo light, which illuminates 360 degrees around the socket and head to show what you're working on. Trick enough, in fact, that this is the first impact wrench we've laid our hands on that required us reading the dang manual to figure out how it works. Turns out you put the forward reverse selector here halfway in and hold down the trigger. Then you can cycle through various light intensities. Again, pretty neat. You can obviously set it so it turns on when the tool's running as well. That's not the only trick up its sleeve though. While often being described by people who own one as pretty big for a cordless gun, and you won't find us disagreeing with you there, this IR is only 8.1 inches long. Compare that to the 8.8 inch rigid and 8.4 inch of the M18. That's not bad. The sheer size of this tool is just more sort of in its bulk, sort of like the Astro Thor gun. It allows for its chunky head to situate that weight over your hand. And this gun's 7.67 pound weight, which is similar to the Milwaukee with an XC 5.0, does feel lighter than the Milwaukee in the hand because not all that weight is out front aided partially by its angled head design, which compounds this weight over your hand versus long ways out front feeling. A tool like this is more comfortable to use all day long compared to most cordless high torques. With Ingersoll Rand's cordless lineup being a sparse and rarely found in our coworkers toolbox sort of tool, the jump to buying one of these would not be one done on a whim, like picking up the latest Milwaukee tool since you have 10 batteries and four charges already. You're likely like us and need to adopt a whole new platform to be picking up this guy. So is it worth it? Let's find out on the dyno. Our first test is called working torque, five seconds and forward. IR's foes go up first, rigid in Milwaukee. Five hundred and ninety-one and five hundred and seventy-two. These two are the highest scoring half inch tools we've run on this test to date out of everything ever. Tough act to follow for the IR, but let's see it. Six hundred and thirty nine, six hundred and thirty nine. Not only did it surpass the two heaviest hitters we've ever run, that's more than a DeWalt high torque or Harbor Freight cordless make in a 15 second run like ever. Let's jump into the reverse test max torque which is 10 seconds. Here's TTI's best stuff from the Milwaukee and Rigid brands. 
Despite only a 10 foot pound difference at the end, the rigid really building a gap throughout the run. You can see why it scored higher in average torque. Here's the Ingersoll Rand. Six eighty four, a little bit down from the other two here. After around six to seven seconds plateauing, not long after the first five seconds from that first test we did. Like it comes out the gate hard and then is happy enough with that performance to pack it in for the day. With that performance, you do get very noticeable radial arm twisting, sort of like the rigid, but to a lesser degree, and this gun gets a 6.5 from us on our wrist breaking scale. Better than the 7.0 rigid, which gets that for its heavy twisting that is definitely more noticeable and requires two hands to stop that twisting, but both better still than the M18, who got a 7.5 for feeling like a rock tumbler in need of maintenance. Our last test is called best case scenario, 15 seconds for all these tools. They preferred forward, but not by as much as you'd think. Here's the Milwaukee and rigid. Seven hundred and ninety one and seven seventy eight. With one test left, IR has a chance to take the belt still. Let's see how it did. Seven thirty-four. Not exactly low numbers on our channel, but to be honest, when we saw six thirty-nine in the five-second test, we thought this thing was on its way to nine hundred or thousand or something. But it really is just hitting hard out the gate. Check out our test socket. Another one retired thanks to this IR. Really chewed it up. This thing just hits harder than pretty much anything we've tested. Even some three-quarter inch impacts. Check out this half-inch IR versus the three quarter inch M18 in Makita XGT 40 volt, at least in forward, on this working torque test. That Makita jumps up over 700 when you use it in reverse, but it's hard not to give props to the IR for doing this with a half inch impact. Even in reverse, the first five seconds of the IR's max run hits 600. If you consistently see rusted to hell bolts and corroded parts, this is certainly one of the best tools that you can buy to bust that muck free, we think. When it comes to our rank list though, let's see if that agrees with this purchase. Starting at the bottom for now, its power runs get turned into points here, so that's 64, 68, and 73. Being rewarded here for that higher dynamic torque, but not by much, only five to seven points over the Milwaukee and Rigid. At 8.1 inches long, the IR gets some serious points for a cordless, 90.6. The tightening torque, like we're doing today on this tool is rated at 1,000 foot-pounds, it made 734 or about 73 percent of that at 275 dollars which is the best we could find for the bear tool this one's not really getting a lot of help there either and it gets 40 points that totals 408 or enough for ninth place below the Mako gun and fourth among all the cordless under bosch rigid in milwaukee but that's not strictly due to power reasons as we wait for torque honesty and price as well on this list which we do feel is important but if you're looking strictly for power across the run, the IR gets 623 foot-pounds on average, putting it right with its IR Air Brother, who also benefits from huge dynamic torque gains down low, and it's second among all the cordless under only that rigid. Without this average torque metric, it would be hard to demonstrate just how much power some of these tools make on the curve versus others. So if your wallet is large, you don't care about size, and you could care less if brands are honest about their power figures, this is your list. Remember, you can forward any order from our T-Store to torquerank at gmail.com for a link to all of our live rank lists. So compared to the Milwaukee, the IR fits in more places, illuminates places at all, and does so quite well, hits harder for breaking rust up and budging things free, and all around will likely get the job done better and faster. But compared to the rigid octane high torque, well, we feel that one's hard to beat, especially for the price, and considering your rigid batteries might also be useful on a whole host of other tools as well. 
at least until it's discontinued in a few months. Then we'll be back to the M18, Bosch, and IR for now. Unless a new challenger from Metabo HBT wants to play with all of his 36 volts, stick around to see that. Click some buttons or links below to keep this thing going. And thank you, as always, for watching.